Hypnosis to Change Your Life with Dr. Steve G. Jones. So we've got two questions here, two great questions. Uh, the first one is in conversational hypnosis, as I, I call it, convo hypno, by the way. That's the abbreviation around the office. And you can use it too. In combo hypno, uh, which is, uh, we'll talk a little bit about conversational hypnosis. It's when you're talking with someone, I, I, can, I can talk with someone without them being in hypnosis and program them to do things or, or to feel things or to think things. I can, I can do that without someone being in hypnosis. And that's conversational hypnosis. Um, the question is, and I have a whole program for that. Again, you can uh, look for it if you want. But... Uh, the question is, in conversational hypnosis, um, do you use an induction deepening and script? And the answer is no, you're not using any of that because conversational hypnosis is not clinical hypnotherapy. Uh, it's, it's not even uh, stage hypnosis. In stage hypnosis, you do uh, use an induction deepening and script. The script is the programming part. That's what I call the script. Uh, in stage hypnosis, you do that. And you, and you make it very clear that you're doing it, and you have the whole audience quiet down while you're doing it. In an office setting, you do it, and you say, okay, are you ready for hypnosis? Go ahead and lie down. Did you use the bathroom? Yes, okay. Relax and uh, close your eyes, and it's very formalized. In conversational hypnosis, you do not do any of these at all. In conversational hypnosis, uh, you... I don't want to get into the whole way to do conversational hypnosis. If you want to check out the website, which I'm not plugging websites here, but it's hypnosis2control.com, hypnosis2control.com. Uh, as you'll see there, there's a lot to it. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're avoiding all of this because you don't want to formalize it. You don't want to draw attention to it. In conversational hypnosis, you're walking up to someone and you're putting them into a hypnotic state sort of, without them being aware of it. And you see this a lot in street hypnosis and so forth. Sometimes in street hypnosis, you, uh, you do have somewhat of a formal process where you say, look in my eyes, pull in their arm, and you say sleep. And that's, that's actually the induction. But in conversational hypnosis, you're using things such as analog marking uh, many times where there's no induction deepening and in script at all. You're just using words to put them, to, to program them, to uh, get a thought or feeling in their minds. Uh, sometimes in conversational hypnosis, you're just touching a part of your body, uh, anchoring them to you to, to feel that you are motivated. So when you say the word motivated, you're touching your, your, your chest. So I like talking to motivated people. A lot of speakers use these techniques on stage, by the way. Um, I just did that, and there was no induction deepening or script. I just said I like working with motivated people. That's to anchor someone to, to feel that I'm motivated. Um, so conversational hypnosis does not use these. Now, the other question was, do you have to inform your clients that you're going to use conversational hypnosis with them during the session? Do you need to make them aware of that before you uh, have the session? It really depends on your consent form. I don't use conversational hypnosis in my office sessions. I just use formalized uh, hypnotherapy. I say, okay, Here's the time where we're going to talk. Here's the time where we're going to do the hypnosis. They don't overlap. So, but if you do conversational hypnosis, uh, just to avoid any legal situation, I would definitely have it in the form that they fill out, and they should have several forms. They fill out a HIPAA form, uh, which talks about their privacy, uh, a form that, that um, allows you to treat them, talks about your credentials. There should be a lot of forms that they fill out uh, all of which are covered in, in my uh, hypnotherapy certification, hopefully in, in every hypnotherapy certification. But as long as you have it covered in there, yes. If you don't have it covered in there, then you, you should tell them. I feel you should tell them. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not giving you legal advice. But I feel, my opinion is that you should tell them because you don't want them to say afterwards, you know, they were really sneaky, and I think they were doing some mind trick on me while I was just talking with them and manipulating me. Those are not things you want to hear, and you especially don't want to hear them in a courtroom. So I would say you should have it in your form that they fill out or let them know. Hypnosis to Change Your Life with Dr. Steve G. Jones.